Hey, my name is Julia DeMarinis, and I'm a science instructor at the Chabot Space and Science Center, located in the Oakland Hills of California. Uh, my background is actually not in education. Um, I'm an astrobiologist. I study, is there life in the universe? My favorite question. Um, and I use this question to inspire students to question their own universes and to really think, you know, are we alone out there in the vastness of the cosmos? So I've adapted one of the lessons um, on the Nat Geo Learning website um, called, Is There Life in Space? I have added our own little twists to it, um, mainly because we have some laboratories at Chabot and we can do things like set things on fire, which is always fun for kids. The first activity is going off of spectroscopy, uh, where we do this thing called a flame test, where you uh, soak some sticks in um, alcohol and um, some salts such as potassium um, and sodium and light it on fire, um, which excites the electrons in the atoms and it gives off a photon of a specific color. We use prismatic glasses as diffraction grating or a prism to show the spectral lines that come out of these specific elements. Then we talk about how those lines can be used to discover signs of life or biosignatures in the universe. The next activity is called Is It Life? that talks about how you define life and what is life. If we were explorers on another planet, how could you tell that something is alive, once alive, or non-living? And we brainstorm a list, a list that defines life as we know it. Then we bring up counter examples. Okay, so what about this? A fire can move by itself. It kind of breathes, it takes in oxygen, and it can grow. Is fire alive? Mm. So how can we add to this definition to make sure we're not saying fire is alive? Microscope, see the DNA or something? It has cells. Maybe cells? Does that work? Yeah. Cells? Okay. So if we're going to go to like Mars or Enceladus and we see an unknown sample. We could take a sample with a robotic arm or something. How could we tell that, hey, this is, this is actually life? Around the room we have 12 samples, mystery samples I like to call them, where the students have to use their own definition to go through each sample and decide if the samples are alive, once alive, or non-living as if they were explorers on another planet. After that, we have a discussion and guess what the mystery samples are and reveal their true identity. Anything is alive? One's alive? I think that stuff on it is alive. After the Is It Life lesson, we have the students break into small groups and discuss what they would need to survive on Mars. They write their ideas on a post-it note. Then we group those, trying to make them into four modules. Um, and those modules, they will actually be building oh, later. What about food, though? Let's think about food. What, how are the astronauts going to get food on Mars? Okay. Once the students break up into module groups, they get to come up with a design and shape of their module. They first sketch out their design with their team, and then build a miniature model of their module. Next, they are ready to build it to scale. We're building the laboratory, and we have sinks, computer, and this is all cabinets, a satellite dish. Oh, now. is a satellite dish to like send messages back to yes. Earth? Yes. Yeah, and it's, yeah. it's powered by solar computer. panels on the side. Well, places where you dig deep, you can find other birds. Well, all the brief designs that we're oh. working on, like HAB and a greenhouse over here that connects and the science lab, since the science lab needs water. The students actually build their modules um, that will attach to the central hab that we have previously built. The results were amazing. Come take a look at our finished product, and in just a moment, we're gonna get a tour of the inside. What I really like about this lesson is the collaboration and communication that these students had to do in order to actually make their habitat inflate. Um, they also got to be creative and fill the hab with um, things they brought from home, things they made out of cardboard, um, so it was really fun for them. And this lesson touches on a lot of different subjects, math, engineering, and they have to use their hands, which I really We're like. We're going to get a VIP tour. Mm -hmm. Alright, I'm stepping in. Greenhouse. Tomatoes. More mm -hmm. tomatoes. Potatoes, maybe? Yeah. 
So these are, are these like a flower, like a garden bed? So this is our little mini uh, workstation. I asked one of my students if he thought he could recreate the hat by himself. I think I really could, but it would probably take maybe two or three weeks if I did it by myself. <laughs> so what was also cool was that people were doing it uh, with me, so it didn't take two or three weeks. So we, only, we got it done in like three days, so I thought that was pretty cool. How do I fit through this? Good luck fitting through that one. Alright, uh, Commander's coming through! Do you feel more inspired to like learn about Mars? Yeah, um, I wanted to learn a little bit more about the craters and more about like um, some of the rover rovers that are on Mars. What I can say for sure about these lessons is the level of curiosity that is stoked with the students. I had students demanding that we watch YouTube videos of the scale and size of the universe and wanted to know more about signs of life. So that showed that they're, they're very curious. Uh, one of my favorite attitude changes was a girl, she came up to me after learning a little bit about scale, saying that a little fight with her brother seems so insignificant after learning about uh, the grandness, the scale of the universe. And I thought that was a really cool uh, connection to the cosmic perspective. If you have the cosmic perspective in your life, I believe, it makes you see the Earth as an oasis that needs to be taken care of.